Hi, this is Askamon TV with our guest today, Dr. Michael Wall, Doctor of Nutrition, Director of Nutritional Services at Integrated Medicine and non physical PC. Today we're going to be discussing gluten and allergies. Doctor, what is a gluten sensitivity and why is it often considered to be an allergen? Well, a gluten sensitivity is a huge problem, in my opinion, uh, in the United States. So let me go through this because uh, there is a lot of confusion in this area. So first of all, the traditional gastroenterologist is the doctor that, at least in traditional circles, is supposed to know the most about gluten intolerance, known as celiac disease. So celiac disease is an incurable autoimmune condition where the person genetically does not deal well with gluten. So when they eat gluten, the immune system sees it, doesn't like it, attacks it, but also thinks that their small intestine looks like that gluten and degenerates the small intestine, resulting in a malabsorption disorder. So gluten intolerance or celiac disease, therefore, is a malabsorption disease. If one malabsorbs or does not absorb normally what they're eating, any number of health problems can result over the course of their lives. Everything from osteoporosis from not absorbing calcium or depression from not absorbing proteins which make amino acids which we need to make neurotransmitters in our brain to think, infertility by not absorbing certain fats in the diet which cause hormone problems, the list goes on and on. There are literally hundreds of diseases that have been linked uh, to a celiac uh, disease. Most traditional gastroenterologists though just recognize intestinal symptoms but there are many what are known as extra intestinal symptoms or symptoms and health problems that can and are caused uh, in other areas of the body outside of the gastrointestinal tract. And that's where diagnosis and treatment gets very, very iffy because the gastroenterologist only knows the gut. Unless you're speaking to an endocrinologist or a hormone doctor about your hormone problems, that can be missed as well, and the list goes on and on and on. So holistic practitioners recognize that all of these areas of the body can be affected uh, by gluten intolerance. So basically, celiac disease is an autoimmune disorder. The only cure is to remove gluten for, for life. There's no introducing it back. And if you do introduce it back, any number of symptoms such as fatigue or chronic diarrhea or any other symptoms, skin problems, again, the list is huge, can be caused. And then there's what's called non-celiac gluten intolerance, which means, and this is the most common form of gluten intolerance, a person would have an adverse reaction digestively to gluten, which again can create any number of symptoms that could be identical to even celiac disease. But in non-celiac gluten intolerance, a person could eliminate the gluten and they can recover and actually improve their digestive response to gluten such that they actually could, could add it back into the diet. So that's the essential difference between celiac disease, which is an incurable autoimmune disorder unless you remove gluten for life, and the non-celiac gluten disease, which is still, uh, treatment is the same, you remove the gluten, but there is a chance of introducing it back in the diet. And I should underscore that both of these conditions are not the same conditions, but are related to gluten. Both cause horrific malnutrition over a course of time, and just removing the gluten and having symptoms go away does nothing to repair all the nutritional deficiencies that can result over time. And that's where a trained nutritional, uh, clinical nutritionist should be led into the picture to figure out what all those other nutritional problems uh, are and fix them. And what are the common digestive effects of having intolerance to gluten? Well, the most common digestive effects of gluten would be loose stool or diarrhea. So that's how the, the traditionally trained gastroenterologist would first recognize a gluten intolerance, or I should say celiac disease. They don't think much about non-celiac gluten intolerance, unfortunately. And if a person is not losing weight, fatigued, possibly having joint pains, and they must have loose stool, they're very, uh, the, the clinical picture is very confusing for the traditional GI doc. But those are the more common symptoms. The most common skin condition of celiac disease looks sort of like eczema, but is known as dermatitis herpetiformis. And then the most common organ in the body that's affected by celiac disease, besides the small intestine, which is a major organ affected, and besides the skin, which I just mentioned had that skin condition, is the thyroid gland. But gluten can also cause diabetes, because when the immune system attacks gluten, it can often attack the pancreatic cells, known as the isolate cells, and that can cause diabetes. So again, there's a long list of symptoms and diseases, 
both autoimmune disease and non-autoimmune disease symptoms and health problems that can be triggered by gluten, whether you have celiac disease or non-celiac gluten intolerance. Is the only answer to gluten intolerance to cut it out in one diet? Are there any negative health implications of removing gluten? Uh, I think the question is a good one. Are there any negative implications of removing gluten? I would say no. I personally do not believe that uh, the human evolutionary scale has adapted uh, human beings sufficiently enough to deal with gluten. In other words, gluten is a very late introduction of agriculture in the evolution of human beings, and we simply don't know digestively how to deal with it properly. If there's any doubt that someone has a gluten intolerance, by the way, I wouldn't really untest it. If you remove gluten and you feel better, that's your gold standard test. But to answer the question, no. I don't think there are any negative uh, health uh, consequences of removing gluten. In fact, I think that the positives far outweigh any negatives. But again, we have to keep in mind if we're removing a food, it is important to balance out the diet. And that's something that a clinical nutritionist or a well-trained dietitian can help uh, a person do. Why is there such a sudden increase of gluten allergies? Only in recent years has more attention been drawn to the specific allergen. Well, I think that the increased incidence of this gluten problem, whether we're talking about celiac disease or non-celiac gluten intolerance, is simply because people and healthcare providers are more aware of it, and they're testing it more. So I test for gluten intolerance literally, literally on every patient because it can cause virtually any symptom. I, I call gluten up the masquerader of many diseases. So I think it's mostly because of awareness, but one could also argue that if we have an adverse compound known as gluten in our diet and we're constantly bombarding ourselves with it, particularly at a very, very young age, I mean, many of uh, the patients I have that are infants were fed gluten far too early in their digestive development as infants, and then their immune system developed adversely against it. Uh, with my children, for example, I kept them off gluten for two full years. Now I don't have concerns with them eating gluten. It doesn't bother them. So the early introduction of gluten is a bad thing for any allergen. But uh, as we said earlier, I think the elimination of gluten is the, is the way to go. This has been Ask him on TV with our guest today, Dr. Michael Wall, Doctor of Nutrition and Director of Nutritional Services at Integrated Medicine of Mount Kisco, PC. Thank you.